Imagine this. Two cops come to your door and arrest you for murder. You know you didn't do the crime. In fact, you were in the hospital at the time the cops say the murder was committed, and you have records to prove it. But the cops have evidence, too. Your DNA. It was found on the dead man's finger. How could that have possibly happened? I've been looking into DNA and whether it's as reliable as we all think it is. We all have a lot of faith in DNA, and it is pretty conclusive. It's better than any other forensic science we have, especially when you have a large amount of one person's well-preserved DNA. To interpret DNA, analysts look at a chart called an electropherogram. A perfect sample of DNA comes out like this. But in criminal investigations, finding a perfect sample is actually not the norm. Sometimes analysts are working with degraded samples that are old or have been exposed to the elements. See how the spikes start to fade away? Or they're interpreting a sample with many people's DNA and all the spikes combined together. It can be hard to tell whose DNA is whose. Sometimes they're working with tiny amounts of DNA, maybe a piece of evidence the suspect touched. In these cases, the spikes can be small and difficult to interpret. Some labs won't even analyze these samples, but some will, even though the margin of error is higher. Technological advances will probably solve some of these problems and make DNA analysis more accurate. But as technology advances, it will also introduce new problems. Someday soon, analysts may be able to detect the genes from a single cell, and we leave our cells everywhere we go. Those cells can travel to places we've never even been. So it's not impossible that your DNA could be found at a crime scene and cops could knock at your door. That's what happened in 2012 to a man named Lucas Anderson. He was in the hospital at the time of the murder. It turns out that the paramedics used the same oxygen monitor on his finger that they used on the murder victim's finger later that day. And that's how Lucas's DNA was transferred to the murder victim's fingernail. Lucas Anderson was in jail for five months before they figured out what had happened.